The deeper you dive into the lore of Elden Ring, the more you see that the tarnished are just as fractured as the Golden Order. The first time you arrive at the Round Table Hold, it's easy to feel a sense of camaraderie, like you're not alone in your exploration of the Lands Between and your quest to collect great runes. But the further you go in your journey, the more you see how different factions and personal motives have pit tarnished against one another. The worst offenders of this are the Bloody Fingers, who make their home at Volcano Manor. Volcano Manor is the home to a group of tarnished who believe the world has been betrayed by the Two Fingers. They are encouraged by their matriarch, Tanith, to take on jobs killing other tarnished warriors in order to show the world that they've been deceived. In truth, it doesn't seem like Tanith actually believes this. She's simply acting on the orders of Volcano Manor's benefactor, Rykard, Lord of Blasphemy. Tanith was recruited by Rykard to be the matriarch of Volcano Manor. We can learn more about this interaction from the consort set. Long ago, when Rykard first set eyes on Tanith, she was working as a dancer in a foreign land. Soon, he made her his consort. She was the only human to remain by his side when he became the Serpent of Blasphemy. In that moment, Tanith was truly charmed by him. It could be said that Tanith's devotion to Rykard mirrors that of Godfrey's to Marika, a human devoting themselves to God. Rykard, the Lord of Blasphemy, was not always the abomination we do battle with in Mount Gelmir. Originally a member of the Golden Order, Rykard saw the Shattering as his opportunity to take ownership of the Lands Between. However, he chose to do so in a way his demigod kin considered blasphemy. Rykard's great rune explains, Rykard was amongst the children of Renala and Radagon, who became demigod stepchildren after Radagon's union with Queen Marika. But Rykard fed himself into the blasphemous serpent, great rune and all. This implies that the serpent existed before Rykard, and by feeding himself to it, he likely took control of its body, perhaps because of the power of his rune. The item description of the Remembrance of the Blasphemous tells us more. Rykard took the form of a giant serpent that he might devour, grow, and live eternally. I understand the road of blasphemy is long and perilous. One cannot walk it unprepared to sin. Rykard planned to literally devour his brothers and sisters in order to add their power to his own, much in the way Godric the Grafted stole limbs from Tarnish to make himself more powerful. When looking at the two in this light, it's easy to see why they are looked down on by other members of the Golden Order. In fact, it's very likely that Rykard and Tanith started Volcano Manor in order to train Tarnish to be strong enough to add themselves to his being and increase his power. We can infer this from what he says to us when we fight him. Join the Serpent King as family. Together we will devour the very gods. Should he defeat us, he then says, now we can devour the gods together. Upon defeating Rykard, Tan seems to hold no ill will toward your Tarnished, saying that perhaps you will meet again along the road. She will then disappear from the manor, but this does not have to be the last time you speak with her. If you visit the arena in Mount Gelmir where you fought Rykard, you will find Tanith hunched over his face, eating what is left. Speak with her and she will tell you, our lord's carcass is not easily consumed. Dear Rykard, please find purchase within me. I wish to be your serpent, your family. One day let us devour the gods together implying that she believes devouring Rykard will bring new life and she will become part of his being. It is likely the Tarnished who reside within Volcano Manor know nothing about Rykard's intentions. We can assume this based on Patch's reaction to Tanith leaving to consume Rykard's remains, saying she is out of her mind. For the Tarnished living in the Manor, the goal is to open the eyes of other Tarnished to the idea that the Two Fingers have forsaken their kind. Raya, Knight Burnall, and Patches fall into this mindset, while Sir Dialos is simply searching for meaning, and Inquisitor Giza only exists so we can all use the Whirling Saw again. The true tragedy of Volcano Manor is that all of its inhabitants believe they have been lied to by the Two Fingers and are looking for meaning in rebelling against their dogma. However, their newfound benefactors are only using them to their own means, in pursuit of power. These tarnished have thrown away their former selves to follow another lie and once Rykard's true intentions are brought to light, they all leave the manor, again losing their purpose. This is the truth behind Volcano Manor. 
what was shown to our tarnished as a place to throw off the shackles of the two fingers and bring others to the truth of their betrayal was actually a breeding ground to create strong warriors destined to give that strength to a new lord in order to feed his own ambitions. Thank you for watching this dive into Volcano Manor. If you learned something new or want to tell us what we got wrong, please like, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell. It really helps with all the YouTube algorithmic things. We really love writing these Elden Ring lore videos and hope to find more obscure pieces of description text that will add extra layers to the lands between. We hope to see you again in our next dive into Elden lore.